Develop a fortune state of mind. Time for a date with. Time for a date with. A date with the Dorsey. Hello, 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 and welcome to yet another date with the Dorseys. I am Dr. Jatan and Floyd Dorsey. The four. We up in here. <laughs> <laughs> Together we make them Dorn Dorseys, and you have arrived at yet another episode of Date with the Dorseys. Oh, this is going to be good. Always good. Be good. Always good. So, listen, if it's your first time, as we always say, it won't be your it won't last. Won't be your last. But if it's your first, we like to, you know, do the right thing and welcome you in, let you know what's going on and what to expect. And so you may be wondering, what is this date with the Dorsey, right? It's not just about relationships, if that's what you were thinking. Let's get mm, right mm, to mm. the chase, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's about so much more. Um, specifically, we encourage a fortune state of mind, and fortune is spelled I-V-T-U-N-E, state of mind. But what does that mean? Glad you asked. Glad you asked. We are in the business of helping you develop, helping you create, and all of those adjectives of yourself holistically from many different aspects of love, life, and business. But particularly, we leverage what we call the five F's. And those F's are family, faith, finance, fitness, and fun. Okay, we're getting up there this time. I, I, yeah, you you you, you came it. up and then you, <laughs> you brought it back down the right way. So That's these awesome. pillars are not just you know topics for us. These are near and dear to our heart and things that we actually use in our relationship and even as individuals. So with that being said, our topics will be one of or a combination of those five F's in some way, form, or fashion. Yeah. Okay. Well, today you may be wondering what are we talking about. And I'm glad you asked because it's some good stuff, as we already said. We got to keep saying that because, I mean, we know it's good. We just got to remind you it's good That's until it. you just get to the good. Yeah, yeah, just in case you <laughs> doubt it. <laughs> just know. Right. So today's topic, oh, you know, actually, before I go into the topic, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Dem Darn Dorsey's. Remember, it's D-E-M Darn Dorsey. If you look for them Darn Dorsey's, you won't quite find us. So look us up on Instagram and Facebook, and you can also email us at support at fortuneenterprise.com. Again, fortune is spelled I-V-T-U-N-E, enterprise.com. Now, back to where we left off. Mm -hmm. the topic for today is thriving professionally and honoring family. Mm -hmm. Thriving professionally and, let me emphasize that part, honoring Family. And you could almost put the honoring family right, first. Right. Yeah. You know, I think in most cases, in all cases, right, family is first and foremost uh, an honor of our lives. So, one thing that we have unique today um, is our special guest, Terry Fontenot. Uh, so, before Terry speaks, I'll give a brief bio uh, of Terry. And then from there, we'll go into a good dialogue about his experience on both thriving professionally and the way that he honors his family. So Terry uh, begins, he's begins his 17th season with the New Orleans Saints organization and seventh season in his current role as director of pro scouting. His responsibilities in managing the pro personnel department includes recommending player acquisitions by evaluating players from all professional leagues, including the Saints roster, monitoring the waiver wire, supervising, excuse me, and supervising the advanced scouting of upcoming opponents. In 2012, he was elected by the club to attend Stanford Business School's Executive Education NFL, uh, St uh, excuse me, Stanford Program for Managers. Uh, this is an education program and honor known across the league as an important training grounds for promising executives. Terry is a native of Lake Charles, Louisiana, I had a standout prep career and was an all-state defensive back at LaGrange High School, a four-year letterman uh, at safety for Tulane. Terry served as a team captain in 2001 and was a member of the 2002 Hawaii Bowl Championship team. He graduated with his bachelor's degree in business and organizational information technology. Everyone, please help us welcome Terry Fontenot. Woo! <laughs> welcome, welcome. Guys, first of all, I want to say I really appreciate y'all um, having me on today. 
Uh, I think it's awesome what y'all do. I listen to the show. I really enjoy it. Um, but just you guys are, I mean, being young professionals that, that are successful and really not young anymore. We're about to be 40 this year, Floyd. Yeah. But being just y'all's openness and, and the way you guys communicate and A to Z, um, the, uh, the information you give is so valuable. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to be on with you guys. Awesome. Awesome. So Terry, I think one of the first questions, we'll just jump right in uh, because I know that there is quite a bit that you will have to say and value you can provide for our listeners. Uh, but one of the first questions is just thinking about, we were talking about your, your prep years and like Charles and then the Tulane. Um, what brought you from Tulane to the job and the role that you have today? Because that is 17 years with this particular organization. What was the journey? Yeah, the journey was um, really Floyd. I was I was blessed with a great opportunity, and and you know sometimes we don't we don't know what those opportunities when they happen. Sometimes we don't realize um, that uh, the blessings that are really happening. You know, I, I had an injury my senior year, and um, Floyd, we talk about that time whenever man you feel like you're kind of down because you're injured and it, it's a little disappointing. But um, but me being injured my senior year and and not getting um, being awarded another year gave me an opportunity um, to get a uh, to get an internship with the New Orleans Saints, and um, you, you know getting that internship it was uh, I started off on the business side I really wanted to work more on the on the uh, the, the coaches side and the pro side of things the, the 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 football side of things but I started off on the business side and I was doing a lot of jobs that I was driving players around to uh, their appearances. Um, I was, I was doing a lot of tasks that um, I got a lot of coffee. I was doing a lot of printing and laminating and um, doing a lot of stuff you, you might not want to do, but um, I took pride in those tasks. I really did. How you do anything is how you do everything. So um, I, I took ownership. I had an ultimate goal, but I just had a lot of pride in what I did. And um, so that actually turned into an intern, inter internship with the player personnel department. And same thing. There were a lot, I was at Starbucks a lot. I was doing a lot of them odds and ends and, and yet I took pride in that. I really did. And so then ultimately um, I, I got a good opportunity in the following year to get more into scouting. And, um, and one thing I tell guys a lot uh, all the time is, you know, it's a mindset. Um, it's a way of life. Uh, y you're not going to magically become a different person when you get this great opportunity. It starts, you're going to start at the bottom and that that same preparation, that same detail, that same ownership, you have to have that with whatever job you're doing. Um, and, and that was a, so I got a really good opportunity and I, I really had the right mindset with it. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. So just thinking back about, you said your senior year, you were injured and then this opportunity came about and it wasn't quite wrapped in the package that you thought it would be wrapped in, right? It wasn't quite the appearance, appearance that you said, you know, for, as I'm sure at that time, as you were thinking about your career that you thought it would have been, but lo and behold, so many things just opened up as you took that first step to uh, take advantage of that opportunity. And I think what I find in so many professionals or young professionals is they want to see everything wrapped in a certain package in a certain way and they have this dream job where it's laid out when in fact you have to really bring yourself to those opportunities maximize those uh what, what's been presented towards you and then you have those additional opportunities that can come along the way that can take you to uh, other different spaces that you aspire to go with your career with that yeah, yeah with with that t so you you mentioned um the injury though uh, and that was the perfect opportunity to be down. I mean, I, I remember uh, in, in playing with, uh, and, and for the record, everyone, Terry and I, we played uh, on the same team in, in college. And he and I, which was an interesting point, it was before our junior year, uh, Terry and I, we would work out like none other, right? We, you know, typically train together. Um, we probably, I think we both had summer jobs in one way or another. But we, we, we took a lot of pride into the work we were doing for our preparation for the next year. And then going into that, uh, our junior year, that was a unique process that the coaches decided to do on how they wanted to elect captains, right, team captains. And what they did, they passed out paper to everyone, and they had a series of questions. And it was really about character. It was about 
you know, who would be someone if you were to pass away and would you want to leave your children with? Or, you know, it was, it was those type of real thought provoking questions when it was measuring the character of a person and not just who's the loudest or whatever it may be. And through that process, it, it became, I guess, apparently clear that Terry and I uh, were both elected for defense as captain, right? But what happened during that year is what was, you know, quite strange for both of us. We both got injured that junior year. So both of your captains of your defense were injured uh, that particular season. And he and I both hit a pretty low point. And I know that uh, for you, happening your junior year, I think you also had the injury your senior year, uh, the next year as well. Like, how did you like, come back from that, Terry, mentally, right? So, you know, not many people are able to bounce back and to thrive, but how did you deal with that internally and, and still continue to move forward? Well, it's, it's a couple things. So it's, it's funny you say that because um, so many of these things t tie into to, to right now, today. And, and uh, so, so picture this, my son, uh, Caden, he's nine years old. He, he's playing um, park baseball right now. So this is his second year playing baseball, and he's made this tremendous jump from year one to year two. He's he's playing really well right now. So they have the tryouts, they have the draft. He's on his team. He's on the athletics. He's he's their starting third baseman. So the second practice, he gets like three balls hit at him at, in a row, and the first two balls, man, he scoops them up, throws a rope to first base, and he looks really good, man. We're real excited about him. The third one. The, the ball comes right, it barely misses his glove, pegs him in the eye. Blood everywhere, we're on the field and, and we had to put pressure on him to stop the blood. We had to rush him to the emergency room um, and he had to get the eye stitched up. And you know, my mindset and everything, everything's a blessing and an opportunity. I don't care what it is, you, you just have to, you have, sometimes you have to look for it, you have to search for it, but there's always a blessing in whatever happens. But now as me and Tanya are sitting with, with blood on our shirts and we see our son and, and we're just, just devastated for him, you know, we feel really bad about this. But you know, the funny thing about it, as I'm sitting down once we got home and uh, we got some food and everything and I'm sitting down with him and he asked me, he said, dad, is there gonna be a scar? Am I gonna have a scar under my eye? And so he, I, I kind of touched my ankle cause I have a scar on my ankle from my senior year, the injury I had, and it just hit me. Everything's a blessing and an opportunity. And we don't know, sometimes, we look at the exact moment and we can't see the big picture like God does. And there's always a plan. There's always a plan. And so I was able to tell my son that story and, and really tell all the kids that story of, you know, so dad broke his ankle his senior year. And if, if I wouldn't have had that injury, I was devastated because I couldn't get an extra year and, and I was done playing football. But if I wouldn't have had that injury, I wouldn't have gotten that opportunity with the saints. I wouldn't have had that. So, so yeah, I have that scar, but but that turned into a great opportunity for me. And that's, and that's, that's grit and determination and, and just understanding like right now, Caden, man, this is really tough to deal with right now in this moment, but this is going to say something about you, how you bounce back from this um, and how you handle this. Like that's going to, because that's a big factor in, in, in who we are, not just how we are when things are going well, but, but how do you react and respond when you get knocked down? And I told him, I said, man, this is going to be a great opportunity for you, son to show how you're going to respond. So he, he's got to miss, this happened Monday, he's got to miss um, like six days until he'll be able to play the game next Monday. He woke up this morning, ran in all excited because the stitches have dissolved. And he said, Dad, I want to play tonight. I'm ready to go, I want to play tonight. And he's so excited. And, and that gets me excited because that shows that, that man, you've got some toughness, you've got some grit, and, and you've got some moxie to really, to really bounce back from things. So. I feel like in those moments, it, it, those are times to really show uh, that grit, that determination, because grit and, and bouncing back from difficult situations, that's a common thread. And you look at any really successful person and there's been a time in their life where they've had to display um, that ability to come back from, from a tough, uh, difficult situation. Nice. That's good. So you have mentioned so much already which leads me to the next question. But some of the highlights that I just can call off that you've already mentioned is how you do one thing is how you do everything. Um, pretty much saying that there's a, a blessing in the message or the mess. Um, so you threw out some of those phrases that seem to be some things that you live by and things that you share with your children to encourage them along the journey as well. So what is it that shapes your perspective on life 
um, even during these difficult times, even you know beyond the, the, the one point that we talked about with this injury, I'm sure you've experienced other difficult times as well. But what, what was it that helped you shape your perspective on life? That's, that's a real good question. And so I had, growing up, I had two very different parents and um, in terms of we, I had an ex extreme extrovert in my mother and an extreme introvert in my dad and two very different people. And, and really I was, sometimes I, I, I think, what am I, am I an extrovert or an introvert? And I, and I don't really know what I am, but I get it because I really got the best of, of my two parents. But my mom did a really good job. She worked really hard to put us in a lot of different situations. So um, really both of my parents, but we were involved in the, in the band and, and, and we played soccer where most of the kids around us were playing different sports. We always did different things and to make sure that we're always in, in environments with a lot of different people and, and put in different situations. And we all, we were growing up like my kids in, in each of their rooms, they have a picture um, that says, be uncommon. It's okay to be uncommon. And that's how I was raised. It was okay to be uncommon. And you don't need to march to the beat of everybody else. You can go on your own and be alone. Um, so, so that's a, that, that was important in my upbringing, um, just being okay, just being unique and being different. And I remember like it was yesterday, standing outside, I was nine years old and I'm on the football field. My older brother was trying out for the Oak Park Eagles. Um, he was in middle school, I was in fourth grade. And I'm standing on the sideline with my dad. And at the end of practice, they're running sprints, they're running wind sprints. And, and it starts off, they're all together. And then all of a sudden, 10 sprints in, 15 sprints in, man, you got some guys way in the back and you got some guys way in the front. And my dad said, Terry, look at that. He said, that's where you can, you're blessed with a certain amount of talent. Like God's giving you a certain amount of talent and you want to maximize that, but your heart and your determination, that's up to you. But like, that's what you can determine. And so your drive and, and your, so at the end, when the cream rises and, and you're in front, like that's the person with the most heart. And, and, and I really, that's really what I live by. That's really what I live by. Floyd, I feel like we gravitated towards each other in college early on. And think about it. We weren't, we're, we're not from the same place. We're different a, a, as people, but like there's, but yet for some reason, man, we gravitated towards each other and we got close and it was because that right away, Floyd, I, I'm not surprised with the success you've had. I'm not surprised um, with who you married and you married up now. Don't, don't like you did marry up now, but I'm, I'm not surprised that you married somebody that successful and that you're that successful. Um, because right away I saw it, there was a different drive and a different determination in you. Like it, it's in your eyes, man. And that's something I had from a very young age. And I understood that, that it was okay to be different. It's okay to be unique because a lot of times when you are, you're going to be the only one on the field. You're going to be the only one in the office. That's just, that's just a part of it. So you have to be very comfortable, um, being unique and being uncommon. And yet you have to understand that it's going to be your drive and your heart that really gets you to the top. So I was blessed in my upbringing that I had parents that really focused on those areas. Nice. nice. I, I love think, it. Yeah. I think you, you, you be uncommon and you can get those uncommon results. Yeah. Right. And then to your earlier point, you said you didn't know if you were an introvert or an extrovert. I've battled with that as well. And I'd like to share with you that you may be an ambivert which is it depends on the situation oh, wow. you'll be extrovert or introvert and perhaps that's the case here <laughs> i like it wow but i love the way that you kind of you know left you started from your upbringing of your family your parents but then also leveraged your experiences throughout life that kind of developed you into what you are and who you are today so i think a lot of us and, I, and as I always say, we like to say us and we, even to our audience, because, you know, we are them, they are us. But we experience things through life, and as we're going through them in that time, it may just seem like it's the, the worst time ever, right? But after you come out of that thing, you're able to look back and say, wow, I guess it was worth it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. So, Terry, going more into your, a little bit deeper into your career and what, you know, your profession, I know you spend a lot of time evaluating uh, talent. Right. I think that's something that is certainly required, but I know your role <laughs> extends far beyond just evaluating talent. But I also yeah. would say, Terry, I've never heard you say a bad thing about anyone in terms of talent or your assessment of people. I mean, you have a real nice way of finding the positive. I mean, a person could absolutely be terrible. But you have a way of just saying what you find is positive, what's good about that person. So approaching that 
uh, and again, that's just my thoughts and reflection of you, but how do you take that talent evaluation part of your job and in, in, in assessing the individual uh, potential players or staffers or whatever it may be? What are some of the things that you look for um, when you're doing that assessing of talent? So it's funny you say that, Floyd, because one of the points always to the scouts are, hey, man, tell me what he can do, not what he can't do. It's, it's easy to poke holes in somebody, and, and, but it, it's a little more difficult to find what they really can do and how they can help you. So, so want to, and, and look, we want to be optimistic and cautiously optimistic, but it, it, it's interesting you say that because that's the challenge and that's what you want people to do. Hey, find something he can do. Um, but yes, look, talent evaluation is, to, to be a really good scout and really good in the personnel department, because basically what my role is, it's, it's all aspects of player acquisition. So we want to bring players and add talent to the football team um, to help you. But it's, and as cliche as it sounds, talent is not number one on our priority list. It, it's more about the makeup of the individual. When I say the makeup of the individual, I'm talking about their character um, and all the aspects of that. But the talent, talent's important but we have to get the right makeup. You know, with our team, we've had some down years. I've been here uh, going uh, 17 seasons and excuse me, we've had ups and downs. Uh, we had three straight seven and nine seasons. And when I look at the common threads on our good teams, we had the right locker room with the right makeup. Um, and, and that Jim Collins, uh, Good to Great, that's one of my favorite books. And it's about getting the right people on the bus, regardless of the process and regardless of the talent of the individuals, you have to have the right types of people on the bus. Like that's the critical factor. Um, and with us, and it, it's our job as scouts to really dig and find out who these guys really are, because look, it's not just about being great people. Okay, yes, we want good, trustworthy people and all that, but it's also about the, the details of what you do. It's, hey, do you have passion? for what you do? Do you love your what you do? Do you love the process? Like whether, you're, if you're a player, do you love the weight room? Do you love the meetings? Do you love the um, getting ready and prepare for the teams? Uh, if you're a scout, do, do you love watching film? Do you love cultivating those relationships and turning over every stone? If you're a coach, do you love teaching and developing? It's not just do you love winning on Sundays, but do you love that Monday through Saturday preparation? Do you love that process? Um, how you handle adversity, which we've been talking about. How is that this kid or, or, this, or this coach or this scout, how are they going to handle the tough times? How are they going to bounce back? Um, and then one of, one of the most critical factors is, is we want endearing uh, staff members and, and endearing players to how are you going to endear yourself to the people around you? And because there are some people that just focus on themselves and making themselves the best they can be. But no, we want you to be able to learn about the people around you and try to bring them up because when you get players and coaches and staff members, or I'm talking about football, but in any company, when you have people that are going to endear and they're going to make people around them better, and that's important to them. So they have that endearing quality. So we're all like, we're all trying to reach an ultimate goal and, and, and when we all have that, but in, in, if you get the right types of people, the right types of people on the bus, that's the most critical factor. Yeah, I, I can certainly see that regardless if you are uh, in, in sports arena for your profession or if you're just in any, any corporate setting, whatever you're doing uh, professionally. Matter of fact, even beyond that, in your family, in your house, you want to make sure if you're choosing a mate, you have the right person on, on the bus with you. Because otherwise, no doubt. You, know, you catch a flat on that bus. So some things are happening. You got to you know, be able to have someone you can trust and depend on that can help support and keep that bus moving forward. So certainly, certainly highly important. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's exactly the direction I was going to go with this. We're talking about, you know, uh, identifying talent and having the right people on the bus and, and being enduring and all those things. And then you also mentioned how Mr. Dorsey married up. I'd like to think that you did the same thing. So <laughs> with that, I did. With that being said, how is it that you deal with balancing life and balancing your family? I mean, we've talked a lot about your career and your family already, but how does it look for you balancing the two? It's, um, you know, first of all, I would acknowledge the difficulty in it. And it's really difficult because if you want to really excel in your career um, 
and yet you also want to be a, a good husband or a good wife or a good father or a good mother. You want to do those things. You want to excel in all those areas. That's not easy because we only have a certain amount of hours in the day. And that's just the truth. So that's a difficult part. But like you guys said, I think the number one factor is having that, that right significant other. You know, um, my wife's support and understanding. Um, again, I have four kids, but it starts with her because she always is preaching that message to them that, hey, when dad's not around, this is why, and this is what he's doing, and he's doing all this for us. She's always preaching that message. She's always supporting. She does everything to, to, to help me to be good in my job and to be good at home. And, and honestly, it, it, there's, it takes a certain type of person to give you that kind of support, and everybody can't do it. That's just the truth. Um, but my, I have that type of wife, and I think the best thing about my wife is she's really honest. She's really honest and you need that because when you're at the bottom of the totem pole, there's a lot of people being honest with you. But as you climb and as you get higher, those people, you don't have as many people that are being completely honest with you. You start getting people telling you what you wanna hear. Mm -hmm. So to, to have somebody that knows you, that knows you that well and will always be honest with you, like that, that's so critical. And look, I, I was doing, a, um, I was at a, uh, I do a lot of speaking engagements. So I'm talking to one of my buddies, um, football teams at a football banquet last year. And I had a lot of really good points to make to these kids and I was all excited about it. So I went up and I did the deal. And afterwards we're in the car, we're going to go get something to eat. And I'm like, uh, how was I, you know? And Tanya said, and she said long. And that was it. She didn't say anything else. And I'm, I'm looking at her. I'm like, what do you mean? And she said, Terry, look, it was really good. You made some good points, but it was way too long. Next time you do this, you need to cut it down. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's really because, you know what? When I was talking to the other people that were at the event, they just said how good it was. You know, that's all they said. You're amazing. And, but my wife was honest. She said, you need to cut it down. And that's how she is. And I don't always agree with her in every single situation, but I know I'm getting the truth. I know I'm getting her perspective. So um, I, I can't emphasize enough how it is to, to, to have that right person. Um, and, and look, we do a lot of things to try to do our best to like, number one, we're going to prioritize um, all our, our decision making. It's there's going to be a priority on maximizing family time. So um, we're I have a lot of coworkers that live 45 minutes to an hour away from the facility. We live 15 minutes from the facility um, to cut down the commute time. You know, my kids, the school my, uh, my kids go to is 10 minutes away. So uh, parent teacher conferences, donuts with dad, all that stuff. I don't miss any of that stuff because I can easily pop out and pop back in. Um, my, the park uh, my kids play at, it's right around the corner. It, it, it's, it's 10 minutes away. And, and those, those are all things that, hey, because there are some things that might be more convenient for my wife to, to have it at, uh, like maybe to have it close to our house or closer somewhere else or to like, but she makes sure like it's, it's most convenient for me in regards to where I work to be involved in everything. Like she works hard to do that stuff. Um, you, you know, my kids are around the office all the time. So it, it, even if she can, if she can get Caden over to the office to hang out with me a little bit, she's going to make a, uh, she's going to work hard to do that. So um, I can't, you know, emphasize enough and having that right person on your side that makes all the difference in the world. Wow. I, I really like the structure, you know, the way you laid it out, because one is, of course, having that, you know, another that's, truly align, you know, getting the right person on the bus. And of course, for her, choosing you and getting the right person on the bus. But then two is as you build your life, understanding all the key components of what that life should consist of and make it easy, right? Make it convenient so that both parties can really be an active participant in all phases and, uh, of the lives of the, the family as a whole, right? And then setting those priorities and, and making sure you prioritize those things. So I think that's, Real good. Well said, uh, Terry. Now, and, and you know, the, there are a lot of, uh, there are so many parallels with, um, with, and doing that with, with the work and the, like, I know one thing I'm trying to do a much better job of is, is operating with empathy. And um, so I'm trying to improve that in my job and also at home. So I'm, I'm working hard to be a better listener, right. To be, to be more active and, and in the moment and really listening, whether I'm at job, whether it's the head coach, the general manager, a coworker or a coach, or, or whether I'm it's with my kids, with my wife, like I'm really working hard to be more of an active listener, not, not, uh, not speak, you know, you can't, you can't hear when, when your mouth's open, you can't really um, learn when your mouth's open. So, so there's also this factor of 
hey, there are things that can make you better at your job. They can also make you better at home. And, and that those are the areas I would say being empathetic and, and listening more are those some areas that I'm, I'm, I'm specifically working on. Yeah, I, I think a key part with that is that, you know, regardless uh, of where you get your feedback from, from, you may want to really listen clearly because I'm sure it carries over to other aspects of your life. Because if you take yourself, Terry Fontenot, you're taking yourself to your company and your job where you're working, but you also have to take yourself to your home. So you're the common denominator in all settings that you're involved in. So if it's feedback on one, um, I, I think it's certainly something that can carry over. So that those parallels are, are important. Yeah, real good. So Terry, you have provided some great insight, right? And you, you've um, shared it so calmly and you have, <laughs> you have fed us with some great information and some may listen and think, oh, it, he makes it sound so easy. But what is it that you do to overcome those challenges? Like, is it the fact that you're able to approach it in such a manner that you understand things are gonna happen, but um, to, the, to, to the point you made earlier about how you built your life perspective, perhaps that's what's, what's carrying you through those challenges. Every, I really believe this and, and it can, I believe that everything that, that, that every challenge, every obstacle, it, it's, there's really a blessing in it. I, I really believe that with all my heart. And sometimes you see it right away and sometimes you have to dig and look for it, you, you, you know, but there's always, there's always a blessing in everything. Look, what we're dealing with right now and not to take away from the tragedy of COVID-19, but, and, and, and I understand that and I'm acknowledging that. And yet there's been a blessing in that. Like, I feel like for me personally, without this, I would have blinked my eyes and my kids would all be gone in college. And because you get in this routine and it's okay, it's the season and the work from the season. Then it's the off season and you just get in this routine and you go, 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 go. And you blink your eyes and things have passed you by. But just the, the different things that I've been able to do, like at home with my family, with my children, like me and me and Caden, me and the girls, like, we we're always playing cats. We on the side of the house, like we're playing baseball, like every day in the afternoon and doing so many things. I, I actually barbecue now. And the, <laughs> my daughter, London, will uh, she'll video me. And, you know, the first time I did it, I watched all these videos with all the different ways to season your meat. And I did all that stuff. And it was so bad. It, it was. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. What did your wife say? Like what The was first the say? first few times it was it was way too salty because I salted it overnight and put it in the fridge and some video said to do that but it was it was bad it just was so but since then i've been working on it i'm improving my barbecuing skills but um the other day me and the kids made uh, uh we made pizza from like from scratch and so there's all these different 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 opportunities that i wouldn't have had but without this situation and and it's going to change me forever because i'm going to understand okay i have to have a lot more balance and i have to figure out ways to be home more because I didn't realize the things that I've been missing. Um, so, so there's a blessing in that, whatever it is, you know, with the current state of the world, um, again, with all the tragedy and acknowledging that and understanding that, but man, I've had so many really good conversations with people that I've been knowing for 20 years and yet we haven't gone to a certain point. We haven't had those, those hard conversations and talked about those difficult things and it's taken our relationship to a different level. Um, so there's always, I feel like in every situation, in every, it's always a blessing and an opportunity. And it's just for us sometimes to sit down and to really figure out what that blessing is and, um, and, and move forward like that. You know, I think oftentimes, Terry, when things happen, right, in light of some of the more recent events, you know, we spend a lot of time thinking about the pain, right, the, the pain itself, but not really enough time thinking about the promise, you know, the, the things that are more promising out of out of the situation. So I think to your point, it goes back to your perspective that you shared with us earlier. And no, I know you're not saying that Terry is perfect by any means. <laughs> and you recognize from a humility standpoint that there are things you, you want to continue to work on. But I think even in that, acknowledging you know, the area that you want to improve on uh, and you're driving your family to improve on, you're driving your organization to work for to improve on, that within itself says even much more uh, about your character as well as any other individual with that perspective uh, character as well. Yeah, indeed. So there's always a, a blessing in the lesson, right? That's it. That's <laughs> it. 
Well, as we begin to close this thing out, as fun as it's been, and you should probably know that you have marked our 60th episode as well. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> congrats. Wow. Very good. <laughs> so, so you know what? And look, we're always supposed to look at the positive, but for one second, I'm going to look at the negative, okay? okay. It took y'all 59 episodes. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Ask me to come on. I almost feel like y'all have like this list and like y'all couldn't get this. And then uh, let's call Terry. We got to call Terry. <laughs> uh, what do we do? We out. We're out. <laughs> <laughs> Terry now. <laughs> This has uh, certainly been a treat for us, but uh, as we begin to close out, so any, any final words, any words of inspiration from you? Um, and, and, and I say that because after you finish, we'll jump right into the dose of Dorsey. So, Terry, any closing words for us? Yeah, I, I really think it's, uh, you know, mentality before reality. Um, our words are so powerful. And, and you have to, it, the things you say, the little, whether you're saying it to your kids, whether you're saying it to your wife, or whether you're saying it to yourself, Man, just just having that that positive attitude and whatever you want to do, whatever you want to be, you can do it. it you you got to perceive it and then you speak it and then you go about um, making it happen. I, I really feel like those are words I live by. Those are words um, with my family. And, um, and and I really believe that it's it's all a mindset and that's where it starts. So if you have the right mindset and um, and your actions are going to follow. Absolutely. I'm still in that mentality yeah. before reality. Did I get it right? Did I get it right? You got it, girl. <laughs> All right. So we'll go right into our dose of Dorsey before we close out here. Uh, we're going to. Well, this one is inspired by Terry. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. So it's, it's called Street Sweeper and it's by Martin Luther the King. I was about to say the King. <laughs> <Martin Luther> King. <laughs> well, I know what movie I've been watching. Yeah. <laughs> Martin Luther King. So I have this on my, like, I have this, my wife's making this to put it on, on the wall for my kids. So like, I think this is so powerful and, uh, and inspirational because that, you know, there's always those people that wherever you go, that they just have a certain mindset of, of the way they work and, and, and they work hard and whatever their job is, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to attack it with just a different passion. And I, I think that's inspiring when you have those people like that. And regardless of what it is, hey, attack it with that type of passion um, and, and have the mindset of, hey, this is what God's given me and I'm going to maximize it. And um, so, so that really, uh, I get chills every time I hear this. That was a great setup. Now let me go and run this touchdown. All right. Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> if it falls your lot to be a street sweeper, Sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweep streets like Beethoven composed music. Sweep streets like Leontine Price sings before the Metropolitan Opera. Sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will have a pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who swept his job well. If you can't be a pine at the top of the hill, be a shrub in the valley. Be the best little shrub on the side of the hill. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be a sun, be a star. For it isn't by size that you win or fail, but be the best of whatever you are. Mm, mm, mm. That's oh. awesome. Awesome. Close out, Queen. Here she comes. So again, thank you for joining us for yet another day with the Dorseys. Again, you have tuned in to our 60th episode where we're talking about honoring family and thriving professionally. Y'all see how I switched that? Because earlier, it was professional first. Yeah, we got it. But my husband brought <laughs> me back. And that is our topic for today. So if you would like to follow us, make sure that you do like, share, download, and save our podcast. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Dim Dorn Dorsey's. You can also email us at Fortune Enterprise. And I forgot again, it's support at fortuneenterprise.com. And fortune is spelled I V T U N E enterprise.com. So thank you again for tuning in. And we look forward to another episode of Day with the Dorsey. Bye. Bye for now. Develop a fortune state of mind. Time for a date with, time for a date with, a date with.
date with the Dorsey. Dorsey.